The trade deadline is drawing near and rumors are running rampant. What's up guys? I already addressed the Max Crosby and Miles Garrett trade rumors and talked about the salary cap earlier this week. Today I wanted to talk about some players who we could actually trade for. Let's go ahead and get right into it. First, I want to mention a couple of players that I don't believe we will be trading for this year. Those guys are Max Crosby, Micah Parsons, Miles Garrett, Trey Hendrickson, Hassan Reddick, Trey Smith, Quentin Nelson, and Cooper Cup. I love all of those players, but I do not see them becoming Bears at this time. But I did want to talk about players that we could actually trade for. First up is pass rusher Aziz Ojolari from the Giants. He was a second round pick out of Georgia in 2021, and he's in the final year of his rookie contract. He is not a starter, and most likely the Giants will let him walk in the offseason, so it makes sense that they could try to trade him for a draft pick right now. Ojolari is an athletic pass rusher who had eight sacks in his rookie season, but he only had eight total his second and third seasons, averaging about four a year. This year he has gotten off to a fast start. He has four sacks, but the Giants have replaced him as a starter. Kayvon Thibodeau and Brian Burns are the team's starting edge rushers, but Ojolari has gotten some extended snaps recently with Thibodeau being out. However, he is getting healthy and should be back soon, making it a good time for the Giants to move Ojolari. His cap hit is just $2.1 million, and he's a guy who could fit seamlessly as a situational pass rusher. The problem is, do you really want to give up a draft pick to rent a guy for just half a season, especially when Daryl Taylor's already doing that job, or would Ryan Poles try to extend him? Either way, Ojolari is definitely a guy to keep an eye out for. Another similar player who hasn't been quite as productive is Joshua Uche from the Patriots. The former Michigan standout was another second round pick. He's had three sacks or less in three of his four seasons as a pro, but he did record 11 and a half sacks in 2022. So he has that kind of upside and he's another guy who could fit here as a situational pass rusher. If these guys are available, I would expect Ryan Poles to at least inquire about these guys. I don't like overpaying for players, but I know Ryan Poles is always looking to improve this roster. I would not want to trade that Panthers second rounder next year. Keep that in your pocket, Mr. Poles. But then I wanted to talk about the Cleveland Browns. They're an interesting team to talk about. They just lost to Sean Watson for the season, and they're in salary cap trouble. And they have a couple of players they might be willing to get rid of. First up is pass rusher Zadarius Smith. He has been a very productive edge rusher who's dealt with some injuries, but he had 10 sacks for the Vikings in 2022, and he's a three-time Pro Bowler with 64 career sacks. Smith only had five and a half sacks last year, but he already has four so far this season, and he shouldn't cost too much to acquire. He's a pass rusher that could definitely help a team during a playoff run, and with the Browns' very complicated salary cap issues, they could definitely be looking to offload some contracts. Deshaun Watson's injured, and his contract is guaranteed, they cannot get out of that. And while everyone else is focused on Miles Garrett, the Browns have much more realistic pieces on their roster that could help contending franchises. Another such player would be defensive tackle Quentin Jefferson. He's another defensive lineman who's in the final year of his contract. He's 31 years old and has a cap hit of $1.98 million. Jefferson has bounced around the NFL a bit, playing with the Jets, Seahawks, Raiders, Bills, and Browns since 2019, but he's had at least three sacks every season. He had six for the Jets last year and five and a half for the Seahawks in 2022. He only has one sack so far this season, but Jefferson is another solid player who probably wouldn't cost very much to acquire. So if the Browns really do become sellers, Zadarius Smith and Quentin Jefferson are the two guys I would keep an eye on the most at the trade deadline. But they could have a couple of other players on the trade block as well. I know everyone wants to hear about the offensive line, so let's discuss two possibilities in Cleveland while we're on the topic. First is guard Wyatt Teller, who was a fifth round pick in 2018. I've heard his name mentioned a lot by Bears fans and circling the rumor mill. There was a reason I hadn't brought him up yet that most of the media just missed. Teller's been on the injured reserve and he wasn't even eligible to be traded. 
so he wasn't really even worth discussing. But last night, he was designated to return, so he is a guy to keep an eye on going forward. Teller has been to the Pro Bowl three straight seasons and has been the Browns' starting right guard for five straight years. He does have one more season left on his contract after this year with a cap hit of $14.4 million. The reason he's a trade candidate is because the Browns, like I said, are in a terrible position with the salary cap, and trading Teller would save them over $25 million in cap space over the next three seasons. Which brings me to the final two Cleveland Brown players on the roster, their starting tackles, Jared Willis at left tackle and Jack Conklin at right tackle. First, Conklin at right tackle, while he's been a great player for a long time, I just do not see him being a fit here. He has three years and $50 million left on his contract, and we just took Darnell Wright in the first round last season. So to me, Conklin is not a fit. But what about Jedrick Willis, the Browns' left tackle? He is also scheduled to hit free agency next season, and the Browns don't look like they have the flexibility to bring him back. He was a top 10 pick in 2020, and he's been a solid player for four years in Cleveland, but he's never quite lived up to the billing of being a top 10 pick. He has 38 penalties and has allowed 21 sacks in his first four plus years at left tackle. He's also allowed 129 pressures over that time, averaging about 30 pressures allowed per season. For reference here though, Darnell Wright allowed 51 pressures and seven sacks his rookie year, and Braxton Jones allowed 40 pressures and 7 sacks in his rookie season. So most people would view Jedrick as an upgrade over Braxton Jones, but not so fast. This year so far, he has more penalties and has given up 2 more sacks than Braxton has. He's also graded out lower via PFF as both a pass blocker and a run blocker. I've talked about Braxton Jones a lot, but right now I do not see us giving up valuable draft picks to bring in a left tackle that might not even be better than Braxton. So I'm going to go ahead and rule Jedrick Willis out. But what about other starting offensive linemen? Who could be available? I do want to mention Trey Smith from the Chiefs one last time, just to say it again. The Chiefs are not going to trade a Pro Bowl guard in the middle of the season when they're going for a third straight Super Bowl. Our best chance at getting Trey Smith would come via free agency next year. But okay, what about Brandon Scherf in Jacksonville? This is a move I wouldn't mind. Scherf has been a quality offensive lineman in the NFL for a long, long time. He was a top five pick in the first round way back in 2015. He's been to five Pro Bowls and has not missed a start since 2021. He's 33 years old and in the final year of his contract. Scherf would definitely be an upgrade, but with the way Matt Pryor has played, the emergence of Bill Murray, and Ryan Bates could potentially be returning, what would Ryan Poles be willing to give up to just rent Brandon Scherf for half a season? So I'm 50-50 on this one. Yes, I do believe he would be an upgrade, but I don't know if it's a move Poles would pull the trigger on. Continuity is a big thing on the offensive line, so bringing in a guy for half a season sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense, unless we had an injury or something, knock on wood. And then I have another player in Jacksonville is Walker Little. Teams could definitely be interested in him. I loved his game as a draft prospect in 2021. He was a project tackle out of Stanford who had all of the physical tools you looked for. He only has 17 starts so far in four years, and he's scheduled to hit free agency next season as well. So he's another guy who would most likely be a rental, but he has the potential to be a really good player. He's a guy who could play tackle or could even move inside to guard. This is another one I don't really see Ryan Poles doing, but he is a guy that would intrigue me. So then let's talk about who else is left out there. Wide receivers Mike Williams and Cooper Cup could be available. We most likely will not be pursuing Cooper Cup, but depending on Mike Williams' price, I think we could look into that. I doubt the Jets would trade him though, but I do foresee some NFL trades happening. And I have two more interesting names to watch. Defensive tackle Sebastian Joseph Day from the Tennessee Titans and pass rusher Chase Young from the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are in trouble over there. They have a ton of injuries, and Chase Young is just on a one-year deal. He's struggled a bit this season, but if you could get Chase Young for like a six-round pick, 
sign me up for that. But the trade deadline is Tuesday, November 5th. It's about a week and a half from today. And we've already seen Devontae Adams get traded to the Jets, Amari Cooper get traded to the Bills, and if you missed it, DeAndre Hopkins was traded to the Chiefs to play with Pat Mahomes as well. And then there are a ton of other rumors swirling around, and Ryan Poles has made trade deadline deals the last two years, even when this team had a losing record. Now at 4-2, and two, with the chance to improve that record even more, Ryan Poles could definitely be looking to add another piece to this roster. Which brings me to players on the team now that still could get traded. We've heard rumors of Khalil Herbert and Nate Davis swirling around. Is it possible that either of these guys get moved before the deadline? Yes, I do believe it is. Let's talk about both guys. First off, Nate Davis. I don't think there's any chance anyone would offer us much value here, but a team could be willing to maybe give up a 6th or 7th round pick to try to get more out of Nate. If they couldn't turn things around with him this year, they could still cut him next year and get him off the books, thanks to how Ryan Poles wrote that contract. And he was a really good player in Tennessee, and while his trade value is not much right now, if Ryan Poles could trade Nate Davis, he would save $9.3 in cap space this season that would become available immediately and save another $9.5 million in salary next season. Now, he's probably going to cut Nate and save that $9.5 next year anyway, but if a team is interested, yes, I could see this happening, although I don't think it's very likely. And then what about Khalil Herbert? This one is tough. Yes, I think there are multiple teams that would love to add Khalil Herbert right now, but for Ryan Poles, Herbert has more value to us as a backup than he does in a trade. While teams probably love Khalil, nobody has given up more than a late round pick to rent a running back for half a season, especially a guy who isn't a pro bowler. Devontae Adams just got traded for a second rounder and Amari Cooper for a third. I wouldn't expect anyone to offer more than a six rounder for Herbert, and at that value, I would just keep him. We are just one injury away from really needing him on the team, and that six-round pick doesn't really help us that much. The value just isn't there, and teams just aren't going to overpay when next year's running back class looks super special in the draft. There are more names out there, and it's possible Ryan Poles is interested in someone that none of us have even thought about. But we have about 10 days left until the trade deadline, and I do think it's very possible that Ryan Poles is going to make a move. He's at the very least going to be making calls and checking in on guys. We just have to stay tuned. We're getting closer and closer to the trade deadline. If you missed it, I did drop an injury report earlier, and I will be live tomorrow at noon central with Greg Gabriel. Be sure to check that out, guys. Stay tuned, and until next time, bear down.